In this video, we're going to have a look at how to add a start date and an end date to a post, and then to have it appear in your listing with an example here, the start date is in the future. For a post in the present, um, say this was an event that was happening at the moment, you'd have a start date in the past and an end date in the future. And then for posts in the past, you'd actually have then the end date in the past. So future is where the start date is in the future, the present is where the start date is in the past, the end date is in the future, and then a past event would be where the end date is in the past. So that's basically what we're going to do over here, and we're going to be using Metabox to make this work. So to understand how to use the date field in Metabox, if we pop over to Metabox, and you'll see that there's a description here under field types for the date, and we have a look at the date, you'll actually see that there's a clue um, here as to how the value is output, um, con and, and, and it's right here, converting timestamp to another format. So basically what they're saying is that the date value is in a timestamp, it's not in a date format. So what we need to do is convert um, the uh, date that we're going to compare it to into a timestamp as well. So there we have the clue for the timestamp, and here they talk about uh, taking the date and converting it into a different format, and that's great for outputting the value, but when you're doing the query and you have to access the field directly, then the timestamp is the format that you'll be working with. And if you look a little bit further down, you'll see that they have an example of a query, and they're referencing a meta value number and the field. So definitely is going to be a value that we're going to be comparing and not the physical date. So to have a look at how that looks in Metabox, so let's have a look here at um, the field group for date. So in the data, basically I have a start and an end date. They're exactly the same fields in their setup. One is start date, and then I've just gone date start for the start date. Uh, use the date picker, and there I've made sure that I've saved the value as a timestamp. And that's going to be critical in making sure that we can compare the value in our query. So both the start date and the end date are set up exactly the same way. The only difference is the ID is date start, and for the end date, the ID is date end. Otherwise, they're both date pickers, and we've made sure that we've set the value as a timestamp. Now we're going to be comparing the start and end dates to today's date. So what we need to do is write a function to get today's date. And that's what we have over here. So here we have the function for today's date. And what we've done here essentially then is convert the date into a timestamp. And that's done using the string to time uh, function from PHP. And that then returns a timestamp. Now the timestamp that we have here for our date is in the same format as the timestamp that is generated by Metabox. It's the standard PHP output when it comes to converting a date um, to a timestamp. So there we have the two dates. So now that we've we've um, created the function and we have the um, the value, I'm going to copy that, and then we just need to go into the page builder and adjust the query. So here at the moment you'll see we have the future in the future, present on at the moment, and past in the past. So what I'm going to do is just show you how I can move this in the future post into being part of the present, and that's by making sure that the start date is in the past. So if I go over to my posts and I look at the post for in the future, then what I'm going to do is head over here to the start date and make sure that the start date is before today. So that is now set to before today, update the post. And when I refresh, you'll see that it's now, the in the future is now on at the moment. So if you have a series of events, they will automatically pass from future, present to in the past based on those dates. Then if we want to change this one to show in the past, then I need to move the end date from the future and move that into before today, update, and now when I refresh the page, you'll see that in the future is now in the past. 
Right, so I'm going to move that in the future back to in the future. So to move that back to the future, then uh, let's choose a future date. Right, so that's chosen update. And now the post in the future is uh, will be back in the future. There we have it. So that's how we can um, move the posts between um, and have them automatically cycle through from the future to the present to the past. So the query to do that is um, there are three different queries and they're slightly different based on whether they are in the future or in the past or present. Right. So we'll head over to the container for the in the future and let's have a look. So we scroll down to our meta query and in our meta query you'll see that we we go by the date underscore start. So that's the the key. So if we look at our field groups, you'll see that that key that they refer to is this ID. It's the unique ID for the field as we've saved it here in Metabox. So we take that value, which is date underscore start, and we then compare it to today's date. And there you can see the name of the function. So to enter that value, we select dynamic data, do a search for PHP, look for output PHP function, and then after that echo a colon and the name of the function, and then compare. So values, dates in the future have a greater value than dates in the past. So if it's greater than, it's in the future. And then we just say, okay, so if the date start, um, compared to today's date is greater than, so if the date start is greater than today's date, then display that post in the future. So in the future, we work on the date start. The next one that we're going to look at then will be the on at the moment. So on at the moment needs to compare two values. We need to compare the start date and the end date. So to compare the start date, once again, it's date underscore start. We use we access the same function to get today's date, and then we compare and we we have a look to see if the start date is lesser than today's date or less than today's date. If it's less than today's date, then it's in the past. So we first check the date start, then we check the date end. So you'll see with the date end, we then check to see if the date end is greater than today's date. So we have the date start is smaller than and the end date is greater than so greater than in the future lesser than in the past and if those parameters are met then this this um, event is on at the moment and then if we look at events in the past so let's go and have a look at that query so if it's in the past then we're going to compare the date end and the date end we want to be lesser than today's date so less than in the past so the date end is less than today's date value and that function is then um, converting today's date into a timestamp and then the timestamp from today's date is compared to the timestamp that is returned by the meta value field and that's how we then calculate uh, where the posts fit based on their um, start and end date so that's pretty much then how you can, you know, if you wanted to create a list of events, that's how you could then use Metabox for the start date and the end date. And these posts will then move seamlessly from future to present to past based on their start and end dates. If you included the time uh, with a date time picker, it could work in the same way. And you could then even in your comparison include the date and the time. And um here you'll see that we actually include the parameters for the time. So if you were to compare um, date and time, then you could even see if an event is on at the moment today between uh, specific times. So yeah, that's pretty much then how you can use the Metabox date field inside Bricks to then query um, events for future, present, and past. Well, I hope you found that um, interesting. Thank you for watching.